blindness of their heart. And I, I want God to, to illuminate his truth into my life. I don't want to be blind to what's right. I want to know what's right. Who being past feeling have given themselves over to uncontrollable lust, to work of uncleanness and greediness, but you have not so learned Christ. Don't, don't allow that. I don't want to be like the world. I know everything around me is trying to convince me. And I know that it's going to have a cost if I don't. I might lose friends. I might lose opportunity. But, but what do I want in the end? I want to be more like Jesus. And so you, you have that decision. So what am I going to do? Look at verse 21. And if so that you have heard him and have been taught by him, the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning the former lifestyle behavior, the old man which is a crop to the deceitful lust. I'm going to put it off. I don't want to do this anymore. It's not helping. It's counterproductive to what God has for my life. You know, doing it's so counterproductive. It's like I'm trying to lose weight so I go to a buffet. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to control my sugar so I eat a bunch of sweets and carbs and, and other things. Why do I do things that are counterproductive? Lord, teach me a better way. And so I'm going to sit with him. And that you put off this old man and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Lord, change my thought life, my patterns of action, the way I think, my desires, what you have for me. I want that. Satan has a grip. And I saw that in Scripture, and the disciples were unable to break Satan's grip, and God gave them some counsel. So I pass it on to you. Look at Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. If you're tired of Satan's grip on your life, how he trips you up, stumbles you, gets you to go backwards more than forwards. I think there's something here in Mark 9. Mark chapter 9. Look at it, beginning in verse 2. It says, And after six days, Jesus take with him Peter, James, and John, and leadeth them into a high mountain. After the age of man, if you would, six days, 6,000 years, after the age of man, God's going to take you up. And what he's displaying is this transformation in your life into a high mountain apart themselves, and he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, as no fuller on earth could, could make it whiter. And there appeared unto him Elijah and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. So this is what's going on up above. But you know what was going on below? Turn to verse 14. And when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and ran unto him, saluting him. And he asked the scribes, what question you with them? What's going on? Why are you questioning my disciples? What's happening down here? And one the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son with a dumb spirit. He, he, he was a mute. And whatsoever he taketh him, he teareth him. It, it was more demon-possessed. And he teareth at him, and he foameth, and he gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to the disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. You know, I'm really getting tired of not being able to be free from Satan's hold. Or helping others be free. And they could not. 
And he answered unto them, saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring them to me. And they brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit teareth at him, and he falleth on the ground. Satan knows his time's short, and he's going to lose at the end, but he doesn't want to give up. And wallowing, foaming, and he asked his father, how long has this been going on for him? And he said, as a child. And oftentimes it's cast him in the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But it cannot do anything. If you can, or but if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help. And Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said, Lord, with tears I believe, help thou my unbelief. And there are times I need to cry and say, Lord, I believe, but deliver me. I just need to be delivered. Free me, Lord. I don't want Satan's hold on me anymore. And he cried out and he said, I believe. And when Jesus saw that the people came running, he sp spake to the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and uh, deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more unto him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up. And he arose. Lord, may I die to self that you may raise me up to live for you. There's a little bit left, Lord. I'm gasping with something that I want for me and I just need to let that die and let you raise me up. And Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him up. And when he was come onto the house, the disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? And he said to them, this kind, come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. And that really hit me because the Lord was saying, Kirk, you pray, but not enough. And it's been a while since you fasted. And I want you to practice these things and have these things in your life because your flesh needs to be deprived. Your flesh is getting too powerful. And I want it to die so I can raise you up in my likeness. And maybe that might be some of you. Pray more. Maybe there are some areas you can tell your flesh no. And allow the Spirit of God to, to strengthen you, sustain you, you can live by the Spirit, not walk in the flesh. And one last thing, and I won't go through them all, but it's in Ephesians 4. And I'll read the first and let you read the last so that we can close. But in Ephesians, back in chapter 4. It says... In verse 24, that you put on the new man, which is after God, and is created in righteous and true holiness. And the example is, wherefore, if you put away, you should put away lying and speak every man the truth to his neighbor, for we are members one of another. It's basically, Lord, whatever I did that wasn't of you, I want to start doing that which is of you. And I come before the Lord with an open face. Change me, Lord. Change me into your likeness. And I come to the Lord and I realize these things that are in my life are the world trying to conform me into its likeness. And now I'm going to come into the things that God wants to use to transform me into his. It's going to be your prayer time. It's going to be your Bible time. It's going to be your fellowship time. And it's going to be doing what God asks you to do. Pray on it. See what God's calling you to. And my heart is that each one of us along the way are changed. I can't wait to come and be like, hey, brother, what's going on? Well, you know, just try and live for the Lord. You're looking a lot more like Jesus these days. Oh, really? You noticed? 
yeah, I sure did. Well, you're looking a lot more like him too, Kirk. Oh, how, you really could tell. You know? Because in the end, don't you all want to hear, hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Well, that's what he wants to say to you. Why don't we pray, and then we're going to, um, if anyone wants, uh, we want to get a picture, and if you want to be in it, we don't force anything. If you want to be in it, you just come up front, and we're going to look that way, and we're going to snap a picture. But let's pray. Father, we come before you, and we thank you for your goodness and grace. We thank you for your mercy and love. We ask that your Holy Spirit would continue the process of changing us into your likeness. We thank you, Lord, that we can come with an open face and be honest with you and say, Lord, there's some things that got to go and there's a whole lot that needs to be put in. But I am here seeking you to have you change and transform my life. And I know we're praying according to your will. So I pray that now for us here today, and I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.